Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to make this video to share my experience with the FPGE exam and I wanted to share where I studied from and how I passed the test from the first attempt. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Reem and I'm a licensed pharmacist in the United States and I'm currently pursuing a postgraduate year two pharmacy residency program. So before I get started, I just wanted to point out that um, the FPGE or the Foreign Pharmacy Equivalency Test is one of the first steps that is required for a foreign pharmacist to become licensed in America. So essentially this test is offered once a year and um, an applicant must pass the TOEFL uh, or obtain the desired TOEFL score before actually sitting for the test. Now this is a new requirement. So um, the first step that I did after I registered for the test um, is that I wanted to understand uh, where I stand uh, or um, I wanted to assess my knowledge base actually. Um, so I didn't know how much time I should spend focusing on a certain topic or uh, whether I should spend it on a different area. So the um, National Board or the NABP um, offers something called PREFEBG and this is um, an essentially a test um, that, is, that resembles the actual FPGE and it's offered by the board itself. It costs around $75, um, 75 US dollars and um, you'll be able to take it um, from your, um, I guess from your house, you don't have to go to a testing center or anything. Um, so what I did is that I signed up for the test and I had um, a timer and uh, because I wanted to create the testing environment um, and then um, at the end of the test they will send you um, an estimated score um, and then you'll be able to review that. So I, uh, when I got my score back um, I found out it's, it was 74 and um, the passing score for the FPGE is 75. And um, I realized after taking that test that I was not able to answer a lot of the medicinal chemistry questions. Also, some of the questions on, um, I believe, healthcare and um, some of the questions on infectious diseases. So I was not really able to answer those. So I really needed um, to focus on those areas where, um, when studying. Um, the second step after I took that test, I actually, um, collected my references. Um, so I decided to study from a total of four books. And this is uh, based on my experience and I asked some of my friends who actually passed the test before I did. Um, so based on their recommendations and what I um, read in the past or studied from in the past, I came up with these four references. So again, those um, this is actually my personal opinion and it has worked for me in the past. Um, so the first book was the Kaplan FPGE book. When you buy that book, they tell you that you really need the Kaplan Naplex book because some of the chapters would actually refer you to the Kaplan um, Naplex book. Uh, so I purchased both books together. And then uh, I also bought the Rx Prep Naplex book. And the third book was the Basic Concepts in Medicinal Chemistry, just because um, remember I mentioned that I found out that I did not really do well or actually was not confident when answering those questions, so I really needed to focus on that area. So after that, um, what I did is that I studied almost um, everything from the Kaplan FPGE book, and this was a really dense book, so um, you really need to learn everything in that book. So that book includes the behavioral sciences section, um, includes basic sciences, uh, pharmaceutical uh, pharmaceutical sciences as well and the clinical portion with is that when um, is that they typically refer you to the Netflix book and then for the clinical portion I studied from the Kaplan Netflix book and the Rx prep book uh, but I found the Rx prep book to be much better and it's uh, newer more thorough and um, I just like the outline of the book so from the Rx prep Book, I really focused on infectious diseases because that was one of my areas of weaknesses like I've mentioned. I also focused on big major disease conditions such as diabetes, um, heart failure, HIV, 
and I also studied the calculation portion from the RX Pro, uh, RX Prep book. Um, so their calculation section is more of like four or five chapters, and it includes um, pharmaceutical calculations. Um, it includes um, uh, includes by sats. So I studied that from the RX Prep book because I, I felt like that would over prepare me for the test. Lastly, um, the medicinal chemistry portion. Um, so I studied that from uh, basic concepts in medicinal chemistry, but I did not study the whole book. I just focused on major chapters. So I really focused on um, drug metabolism, um, acid basic um, chemistry, stereochemistry, um, also like stereoisomers and things like that. I focused on the structure activity relationship. And I'm, I can't, what I did is that I actually um, saved some of those um, structures of the medications um, as a, uh, on Anki app. And I used to study those while, um, while I'm waiting for something or if I was out and um, you know I'm waiting for an order or waiting for the train. So I would just study um, or actually review those structures because um, they can become very tricky and it's really hard um, to distinguish which drug is which. So um, after that, I took the FPGE test and I found out I passed, I think two months after that, I found out I was, uh, I passed the test and actually I got a really good score and I was so happy uh, with how well I'd done it. Um, so this wraps up my video for today and thank you so much for watching and please if you have any additional references or you found some references that helped you in the past, uh, please comment below and feel free to share that with everyone. And thank you again for watching and if you have any questions or any comments, uh, please shoot me an email and I'll be happy um, to respond as soon as I can.